everyone welcome to pumpkin har now today we're going to go over my Jason Voorhees collection I have over a thousand of these <laughs> I'm just messing around don't mind me I'm being silly right now I got a total of five of the Jason Voorhees uh, figures that I have from NECA and we're going to be talking about those in general okay uh, I had to actually look up what Jason's were because I collected these a long time ago and I kind of forgot them because I'm not 100% familiar with the actual characters because I haven't seen the movies not since they came out uh, but I do watch them on a rare occasion I'll hit uh, a certain movie skim through it a little bit you know because I've seen them so many times it's like whoa okay but anyway long story short I do collect them because I do like the character this franchise in itself is my second all-time favorite franchise next to the Hellraiser franchise and that's the coolest one of the bunch in my opinion but anyway I do like all the many uh, variants of uh, Jason's that they have out there okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with this one here this is from part four um, the movie in itself and the accessories that it normally comes with is a hacksaw okay and it also comes with an axe as well as a cleaver a meat cleaver as well and also a uh, knife and it comes with a hand a different kind of hand I think it's probably because I think what I see is a lantern that he carries I don't know if he does or not but uh, probably the hand is for that lantern I don't know what it is but anyway it comes with that as well okay uh, I don't have the actual pieces out because they're sitting in a closet in a bag in a box okay what I do is when I actually get the um, the NECA figures in, I take all the um, accessories and put them in a separate bag and put them away so I don't lose them. But they are in their own separate bags. So anyway, let's give a talk about this particular figure here. Jason Voorhees from Part 4 of Friday the 13th. Now, I'll just leave that there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. The one thing about this particular figure is, I'm going to show you his face here in a second. Okay. The mask is really cool. Now, there is the mask from uh, Jason uh, Jason X. Yeah, I had to think about that. Uh, where he's standing in that warehouse and they got them all chained up. That mask with the wide bridge nose, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm seriously thinking about looking for one, an actual you know, replica of it because it is a very cool looking mask. I do have some uh, paintball masks as well as a spirit Halloween type Jason uh, mask uh, the paintball mask I got a black one as well as a white one they're pretty cool looking too but anyway the long story short I want to get a hold of one of those uh, Jason X masks not the um, um, the uh, the last uh, other Jason's there where he goes super super centurion whatever you want to call him I can't remember, but anyway, not the metal mask, but this one here, the, the original mask that I was talking about. But anyway, let's get into pulling the face and the mask off this face here so you can actually see it. All right, now, now as you can see, he is one ugly motherfucker, okay? Now, keep in mind, if you are a kid and you don't like cussing, my advice is not to go any further because there will be on a rare occasion me saying F this and F that. So keep that in mind. But in most cases, I'll try to keep it clean. But every once in a while, it'll slip out. Okay? So keep that in mind. That's why I set up my uh, videos when I, I upload them. Not for kids, you know what I'm saying? In case they take a chance on it anyway. But anyway, long story short. Alright, as you can see, Jason is quite ugly. He's quite damaged. Okay? The mask, I believe it does also come with a different mask. But I could be wrong about that. Or maybe it's a different head. Alright, so let me get him, there we go, he's back on. Alright, also on the top of the head, he's got a little blood there on the top of it. The mask in itself, as you can see, is split. Okay, see where my finger's at? Right, that's definitely from part four. Okay, that's where we got the axe in the head from, I think, Corey Feldman? Yeah. But anyway, the detail of the jacket is really, really nice. Now you'll see a lot of like bobbleheads and body knockers that are in the shape of this de particular design, okay? The machete, okay? 
Uh, let's turn that around. And the hand's kind of loose on this here for some reason. And there we go. That's better. That's more like it. All right, there you go. All right, articulation-wise, it's no different than any other NECA figure. I think it's 32 points of articulation. The head does move. The shoulders, the elbows will bend. All right, as you can see. All right, and also the hands, torso. All right. Not so much. Every once in a while, you'll come across a NECA figure where they actually have the torso moving. So that's an extra uh, piece of articulation. But it does move at the hips, as you can see. It's a little bit. All right. The legs, as you can see, they do move right here, as well as the kneecaps and the feet. All right. So let me show you what his pants look like. It's a very cool looking design for a Jason. I love the color scheme on this thing, too. The back of his head. Alright, very cool. Alright, and it also comes with, hang on, let me just put him back on his stand now. Some of these stands, no offense, uh, the holes in the bottom of these feet are a little looser than they need to be. So sometimes you got to switch out the feet and you'll get a tighter fit. There he goes. Alright, so we're going to put that down and out of the way here. Alright comes with this tombstone right here. Oops. Everything's in the way here, guys. Hang on for a second. I got a lot of stuff on this table. All right, so what I'm going to do is get my fingers out of the way because of this. All right. As you can see, she's at rest, okay? She's not resting in peace. That's for sure. All right. Because you do see her all through the movies every once in a while. Jason, you need to kill. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> like in uh, Freddy versus Jason, or is it Jason versus Freddy? Freddy versus Jason, that's what it is. Now that movie in my in, in itself, I love that movie, and I also got the character from that movie. But that Jason is a super badass. Okay, I love the way he looks, even though it's not Kane Hodder. I was really disappointed when they said they weren't gonna re they were gonna replace him with somebody else because his eyes, Kane Hodder's eyes, were too serious. They wanted kinder eyes. And that's what they end up doing, okay? And the same thing when it comes to Doug Bradley making the decision not to uh, do, a, I think it's a Revelations. He decided he didn't like the script and he hasn't been back since. And it's just like that. It just changes things when they do stuff like that. Like with the 2010 version of uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I liked the movie for what it was. It was darker tones. A lot more evil. It didn't have all the comical uh, stuff that you would normally see in those movies. And a lot of the fans didn't like it because of that crap. But I, I liked it for what it is. But anyway, this is the tombstone based on Pamela Voorhees. Okay. It's a nice thick tombstone too. But that comes with that accessory too. So let's get him out of the way. Now we're going to put part two up on the stand. Now this guy comes with a, um, um, let me think about it, I think it's a pitchfork, maybe a spear, the machete. Comes with a different head too, it's show you, like the, the deformed head on part 4, very similar to that except it's a little more deformed. It does come with that and like I said they're sitting in bags in the closet. But this is part 2. In part 1 a lot of people assume that Jason was doing all the killings, obviously the majority of you know that wasn't the case. It was his mother doing all the killings. And she ends up getting her head chopped off in the end. And I believe with this particular set right here, with uh, part two, you do get the Pamela Voorhees head. You do get that. I think that's also in the bag. Uh, but anyway, this is part two. He's wearing the burlap bag. In the 2009 version of the movie, he's asked, I think it's Derek Mears, I think he's the one that does Jason. He's like six foot five, just like uh, Tyler Main, who was uh, in the Hollow Rob Zombie's Halloween. They're about the same height. Absolutely massive, and I love that concept because they were gigantic. But anyway, he wore a burlap bag in the movie after killing that hillbilly, and he sees the uh, the hockey mask, and he says, "Okay, let's switch it out," and that's what he did. It was a very cool scene, in my opinion. But anyway. This is part two. It comes with a pick. Okay, so we're going to get a close-up look at this particular figure. Alright, I just need to get this stuff out of the way so I don't knock it over. 
Hang on, be patient with me, people. I got a lot of stuff on the table here. All right, now. Okay. The burlap bag. I'm going to move it in close so you can see it. I've yet to figure out the uh, lighting here so we don't get all that, that shadowing because it does distract from the uh, actual product. All right. This hand is a little bit damaged, see? All right, uh, switch it out. There you go. Right, see, the lighting is a little bit different. I'll figure it out one day. I promise. Okay. And that's the pick. It's got a little bit of blood on it. So let's just turn that around. So the blood's actually down. So you can smash down on you. Alright. Okay. Now he's wearing overalls and some checkered shirt. Very old school. Okay. That's what farmers wear. Okay. And he is a farmer. In the worst kind of way. Alright. Alright. And that is my Jason part 2. Okay, comes with the holes in the bottom of the feet. So we're going to put him back on the stand. And we'll get right into the next figure here, guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's just move him over here. Now we're going to get into this variant. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I forgot one more thing. When it comes to that part two, it also comes with this, which I think is really, really cool, is the fireplace, or the fire, well, campfire, there you go, it does come off, as you can see, you just slip it on, okay, boom, we have fire, it does come with that, so that's a very cool thing, I left it out because it's cool, okay, and it looks good in front of Jason, all right, and I'll show you the bottom of it. Alright. It's very cool. Alright. Now, this guy here is just a Jason Voorhees, and I think it's from part um, part four. So, like I said, they were making um, different figures based on um, part four a lot, and this is one of those prime examples. As you can see here, as compared to this one here, they are similar with the exception that this one here is shinier okay but it is a variant to this one here okay and with that in mind he does come with a nice clean machete I'm not sure what the accessories are because I haven't really pulled it out to know what's in it but it does come with three separate masks okay I chose this one here because I just like the looks of it it really stands out so I'm going to pull it in so you can see it alright and I'm also going to pull I think I can do it. No, this one doesn't come off. Okay. These are different heads. Okay. As you can see. You would have to literally switch out the heads, which have different masks. Okay. There is a traditional one, and I'm not sure. I forgot what the other one looks like. But I like this one here because it really stands out. Okay. Get that out of the way so you can move it in closer. And that's what that looks like, guys. Again, it is a copy of part four except the color scheme is just a little bit darker but you can see it, it does have tan pants so it's definitely part four but it doesn't have as you can see right here he does have that crack on his uh, skull okay it is definitely part four it's just a variant of it the way they made it okay the back of it all right sorry about the lighting here and that's what she looks like okay I'm going to put him back on the stand because they keep falling off the stands. Okay, we're good there. Now, let's push this out of the way. Now we're going to get into 2009's Jason Voorhees. Alright, move that in a little bit. There we go. This is the 2009 version. This is Derek Mears. He's the one that actually does uh, Jason in this movie. And you can see he's got hair according to this. Uh, strands of hair, put it that way. And obviously he's heavily deformed. I'm going to show you what that looks like when we get up. The machete is a lot longer than the other ones. I'm not saying that they are this uh, different, but they are 
in a sense, it just seems a lot longer than your traditional machetes. But they are, in fact, probably the same size, you know, according. But anyway, he does wear a jacket here, which is very different. I'm going to knock this off its stand. There we go. We're going to pull this back so we can show you the differences here. Okay. Oh, I believe... Let me show you this real quick. This tombstone comes with that Jason that I just showed you before. All right. I wanted to show you that real quick. It's a very cool looking tombstone. It says Jason Voorhees on it. But anyway, that does go with that variant of Jason 4. This is 2009 with Derek Mears. Let me see if I can... Yeah, I can pull the mask off. Again, as you can see, he is one ugly motherfucker. Okay, that's what he looks like. And that hair, okay. The jacket is very unique in patterns, as you can see. All the way down, it's almost like a trench coat, but it's like a three-quarter trench coat. It's very cool looking, and he's absolutely huge in this movie, too. And the thing about this one, I've actually seen this movie... Uh, is the fact that he ran ridiculously fast. I'm like, holy fuck. It was a little intimidating when you see him running full speed. Yeah, that's very intimidating. In most cases, you don't see Jason run. You just see him walking. Or he's right on top of you and he just chops you down with a machete. Okay? But anyway, that's what this looks like. Alright. Fantastic detail on the jacket. I love the jacket. The machete, as you can see, it's very long. Okay. The pants are quite different. As you can see, it's got a buckle that, I guess, underneath here has some accessories too. Okay. But this Jason is very cool. A lot of people didn't like these new reboots. They just seem to hate them automatically because they don't have the original actors. Like in... Uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street didn't have Freddy Krueger in 2010. They didn't like it because of that. Uh, and then you got Hellraiser. Uh, Doug Bradley wasn't in any of those movies from Revelation and on. They didn't like that. Um, when it comes to uh, Michael Myers, uh, they didn't like Rob Zombie's version. You know, it's just it is what it is. It's just one of those things. All right. And the hair right here is really cool. See? It's pretty cool. I like that. But anyway, this is the 2009 version. He stands around six foot five, just like Tyler Maine. They are massive, massive guys, but they are very intimidating and very cool looking for their size. Okay, that's just my opinion on that. All right, that is the 2009 version. Also, um, in that movie was um, you think I can remember his name? But anyway, he's part of the Supernatural TV show, something Padalecki can't remember his first name. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, but anyway, he was in that movie. And he had some hot girls in that movie, too. <laughs> anyway, it was a good movie for what it is. Okay? Now we're going to get into the last one. My all-time favorite, Jason. This dude is absolutely badass looking in the movie. He is from... Hang on, let me just reposition him here. And then we'll put him up on a stand. E okay, now. He is from Freddy vs. Jason. All right. Alright, All right. I believe it does come with different masks or different heads, which in this case I think it's just a head because it's all one piece. But this is from uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, that movie, I liked it. Again, very nice looking women in that, okay? But the movie in itself was cool in the way that they handled it. Freddy was a badass in that, but I don't think he's no match for uh, Jason in my opinion. But that's just my thoughts on that. In my opinion, when it comes to the supernatural type characters like this, Jason is definitely on the top of the food chain, okay? No offense. Because he is technically supernatural. Where uh, Michael Myers, he's a killing machine, okay? But he is not supernatural like a lot of people are assuming that he is. Some say when he died, obviously he comes back, he's supernatural. But there's no real conclusive evidence to prove that he actually died in any of the movies other than what you actually see 
doesn't necessarily mean he actually died. He might have just fell into a slumber and automatically woke up. We don't really know. We're not 100% sure about that. But he is, in fact, a killing machine. And I love his ruthlessness because when he was a kid, he was curious about death. And that shows in Rob Zombie's version. And he would start off with small animals. And then, obviously, he would progress to that boy. And he was kind of ruthless when he did it. And he showed no remorse when he did it. He actually liked it. And that's what triggers Mike to, uh, Michael to do what he does. He just likes killing. That's just the way it is. Jason's the same way. But Jason's been through a lot more shit than Michael Myers has been. He's been to hell. Savini Jason from the uh, video games. He's a super badass. Okay, He's from actually hell. They created him and stuff. That's pretty cool. But anyway, I think Jason uh, I think is a you know serious step up from Michael Myers when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's just my thoughts. I'm not trying to offend any uh, Michael Myers fans, but it's just my personal thinking on that. But anyway, this is the 2000 and no, not the 2009. This one here is Freddy vs. Jason's version. I'm going to show you what that looks like up close. The machete in itself. Oops. Hang on for a second. Let me pop that off the stand. All right. Let's get these guys out of the way because I keep poking them because of the machetes. Okay. Now, the machete you can actually pop off the flame. All right. Well, I'm not going to do that, but. There is the bloody variant uh, machete, and there's also the clean cut machete, and you can just put the flame on the machete. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, show you what that looks like. Nice little detail on that too. They did a nice job on this figure. When I seen this at that comic book store, I said, "I gotta have it." Now, mask wise, I'm not positively sure. There might be two masks, maybe three masks. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I messed with it. Uh, like I said, they're sitting in the bag in the closet, so I don't know what I have in that bag. But anyway, the actual detail of the shirt here, I think is where he got stabbed. It's really cool. The jacket, again, is almost like a three-quarter, okay? But the, he's tattered and torn because he come from the grave. Again, like I said, he's supernatural. You just don't come back from the grave after all those years and come back on a killing spree, okay? All right. Look at Jason's head. That's really cool looking. I love the detail on this thing. Really, they did a fantastic job on this one here, on the details. McFarlane Toys, they have a tendency to really step up their game when it comes to details. I have that Frankenstein um, McFarlane. I'm not sure what series it's from, but it is a Frankenstein character from McFarlane Toys. And they put a ridiculous amount of detail into those figures. They really step up their game when it comes to details, okay? I'll show you my Xenomorphs that are based on McFarlane and how detailed they are. They really do a nice job on that. As you can see, it's got a hinge system on it, on the legs. All right, this is a heavy figure, too. All right, the hands, that's very cool looking, okay? This is a gorgeous piece. The shoes are absolutely massive looking, see? And I think the reason why they put him on there is because he's not tall, tall. Um, I'm not sure who actually does this um, Does this Jason here. I don't think it was Derek Mears, was it? Yeah, it was Derek Mears. Or maybe not. Can't remember who it was. No, maybe it was um, it's the other guy. I can't remember his name. But yeah, <clears throat> there was a different actor that did this Jason here. The one in 2009 was done by Derek Mears, okay? But they're all about the same height. As you can see in the movie, Jason does tower over uh, Freddy. All right. Articulation-wise, they're all pretty much the same. They do bend at the knees, and they got to click like a, because of the hinge system on it. The feet do turn, but they're tight. Because I don't move this, I leave it sitting on a stand, and it looks pretty on my shelf. Okay? But it is a nice piece right there. So let's just go ahead, put him back on the stand. And then we'll end this video because that's the last of my Jason Voorhees figures, okay? Now hang on for a second, there we go. Alright, that's pretty much it when it comes to my Jasons. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm not 100% totally familiar with them, but I try to do the best that I can with them. Uh, I definitely do have two Jason Voorhees uh, Part 4. One, obviously, is a different variant because it got different head... head masks on them 
uh, and it's a lot shinier obviously but it is the same concept as Jason 4 the one I just showed you part 2 and then I also got the 2009 I'm not 100% locked on finishing collecting Jason's yet because there is part 7 coming out and it has the big long chainsaw not chainsaw but um, kind of like a radio arm saw but it's got a long handle you know what I mean but anyway uh, I got that one coming in through pre-order once that comes in we'll definitely do a video on that but outside of that, um, I think I'm pretty much done with the collecting. Unless I come across something that really stands out for me. Uh, but for the most part, this is my Jason collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. This is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day. Oh, hang on for a second here. Let's move that in. There. Alright, this is Pumpkin Horror. Have yourselves a good day. Alright, bye.